Let's go back to one of our top stories. Uh, the Constitutional Court dismissing that rescission application by former President Jacob Zuma. Mzwanele Mani is the spokesperson for the Jacob Gedleishegisa Zuma Foundation and joins us now for some reaction. Mr. Mani, thank you so much for making time. So the Constitutional Court saying that the former president has not met the statutory requirements for a rescission. What's your response as the foundation? Yeah, <clears throat> good, uh, good afternoon, uh, Chairman, and your viewers. Now, firstly, the first point you make is raised that uh, almost three months later, uh, then this judgment comes. That on its own, that delay on its own, was a travesty of justice. Justice delayed is justice denied. And today was just a continuation of that theme, where the Constitutional Court even took a very astounding view to say that the treaties uh, that the country has signed to, the treaties that the country is uh, signatory to, that uh, those treaties uh, are not binding as it were, yet you've got those treaties even domesticated in our constitution in section 39, which says that uh, must be taken into account. Uh, but we have a constitutional court that says it's not obliged. So indeed, uh, it's a judgment that is very, very, very funny. Uh, this judgment it, uh, does not inspire confidence uh, in the rule of law, does not inspire confidence that in this country uh, the constitution is applied uh, to the letter. So that's really our attitude to this. So what, what are you then going to do now? Do you accept that this matter is now final? Well, our lawyers are going to finally advise us to where to from here. But indeed, the highest court in the land has uh, uh, pronounced, if you had to say to me this is a judicial dictatorship, I wouldn't be able to argue otherwise uh, because of the situation here uh, where uh, the, 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 the dignity of the court has been ranked much higher than the human rights as enshrined in the Constitution. And even the fact that to protect that dignity, the court went out of its way to dispense of normal procedures, uh, to see to it that everything is seen to be done transparently and uh, in terms of uh, uh, the dispensation that is there in our justice uh, system. But instead, this court decided uh, that it would straddle into arbitrary grounds and say this, this case is, uh, uh, is extraordinary. I mean, we took issue even with the kind of language that this court has been using. Uh, last time we had uh, funny terms like uh, recalcitrant. Today we've got another skullduggery. What kind of court uh, is so angry and so emotional that it loses the decorum of dealing with this matter? How do you deal with a, a 79-year-old man uh, like this and say skullduggery and all of that? So we think that is mm. a clear indication that the, 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 the contention we've had before that this court is emotional, this court is angry, it has been reconfirmed and reaffirmed. Yeah. Uh, but some people may argue, Mr. Mani, that where was uh, that uh, dignity on the part of the former president? Because he was emotional, he was angry uh, when he was writing letters to the Constitutional Court, releasing statements, uh, attacking the Constitutional Court and claiming uh, that they were not really interested in uh, giving him the justice that, that he deserves instead of participating in the process that was unfolding, leading to where we are now, where the Constitutional Court had to sentence him to prison? I think two things. One, I think South Africa must not be misled to think that uh, because the, the current theme is that President Zuma refused to go to the, the Zondo Commission, as it's now called. President Zuma refused to go to the State Capture Commission uh, not because he was refusing, but because he had an issue with the fact that the Deputy Chief Justice appeared to be uh, biased. And he dealt with that legally and got this matter reported in, the, in, in, in court. We were very surprised that uh, DCJ Zondo decided not to use the remedies that are provided for, even in his own act that has uh, founded uh, that, con that, uh, that commission. He, he, he dispensed of all of that and he went to the Constitutional Court when he gets there, he found recepti receptive ears. Those ears were not receptive when Colin Kosa's case of murder by the army was brought before it. It relegated the matter to the high court. This court was not receptive when the DA brought an application 
uh, around the rules and regulations of this uh, pandemic, something that has killed people. This court relegated that to the high court. Mm -hmm. And then, for no reason, this court then has got uh, receptive ears to a, an administrative thing as in contempt. Even if you look at the exclusive, exclusive jurisdiction of this court, as articulated in Section 167, Paragraph 4 of the Constitution, you will not find anything that approximates uh, dealing with the issue of the content of court uh, in those uh, exclusive jurisdictions. So indeed, uh, this court acted very irrational uh, uh, in, in, in this situation. So why didn't the former president then come to argue that case in the constitutional court when the contempt a case was being heard? Because he had ample opportunity to come and tell the court why he felt that they were being unfair. The arguments that he made now in his rescission applications are the same arguments he could have made when the matter was being heard. His Excellency President Zuma gave the court an upper hand. He said he thought that this is a court that uh, is consistent. He thought this is a court that is emotionally balanced. And he, he took the view of historically how this court has uh, uh, been uh, rejecting cases. And it is so no reason why his would be accepted if it could not take a Colin Corsa case, if it could not take the pandemic case that was killing people, uh, there was no basis for him to think that it would uh, take this on. So he assumed that this court would mm. be consistent and to relegate this matter, he would deal with it in the high court. Because even this thing of saying he walked out and all of that, President Zuma declared he didn't actually even walk out. But it's a matter that he would have dealt with properly at the right forum, which should have been okay. the trial court. But the fact that the constitutional court did not give President Zuma a right of appearing in a trial court where witnesses would be called, where evidence would be adduced, uh, is, a, is a travesty of justice, is actually unconstitutional, and we continue to say this judgment is not making sense. It's an angry judgment. It's an emotional judgment. So what changed, uh, Mr. Mani? I'm trying to understand what changed between the time when the president elected, the former president elected not to partake in the process in the constitutional court during the contempt of case. What changed between then when he chose, I don't want to participate because I don't think the court is emotionally balanced, between that and him deciding that, let me go back to this court that's not emotionally balanced and argue for rescission. He, he was again hoping, again giving the court the balance, the benefit of doubt, excuse me, um, the, balance, the benefit of doubt, hoping that the court will reflect. He was going back there. He was not going back there to argue the merits of his case or the, to explain the attitude of why he didn't do one, two, three. The decision was to say, court, wake up. What you have done is wrong. What you have done is a violation of Article 9 of the uh, international law in terms of the UN Convention. It's a violation of Article 14.5 uh, because the, 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 those provisions are actually encoded in our own constitution. He was going there to say uh, what you are doing is against not only our constitution, but it's also against international law. So therefore, uh, he thought he was giving the court an opportunity to reflect and take a different decision, maybe a decision to say we've erred, and therefore for this matter to be dealt with properly, it must indeed go to where it should have gone to so that it can be pro properly threshed and so President Zuma can raise his reasons of why he, he, he acted the manner he did. Mm. But he was never given this opportunity. Instead, he was incarcerated without that trial. He was denied the right to appeal. He was denied the right to even mitigate the sentence. So it, he was he, invited to mitigate. <laughs> but he was invited to mitigate against sentence. They sent him a letter saying, Please send us your submissions. Should we find you guilty of contempt of court? Please send us your submissions and mitigation. He elected not to do that. I would like you to cite me an authority that gives them the right to do that. You see, what is important here is that the people mitigate a sentence when a sentence is given. This has been the practice. This is the norm. This is the law in this country. This is the process. This is the procedure. You go to court, the court sentences you, and then maybe next week or next month, we we'll deal with your sentence. In there, you go and mitigate your sentence, having accepted the verdict. 
President Zuma didn't have that uh, opportunity. You can't have a situation where we are said we are told to come and mitigate a sentence which is not even given to go and mitigate something which uh, guilt has not been declared. Why did why should President Zuma assume that uh, he would get uh, he would be he would be guilty? So you are saying to me that President Zuma should have gone there and assume he's uh, he's uh, 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 not being innocent. He must assume his guilt and start pleading uh, as if he has already been found guilty even before the pronouncement. This is how irrational this whole thing is. Okay, we, we're out of time, Mr. Manyi. How is he doing now, the former president? Uh, he's coping with the situation. Uh, he's, he, he, he is unwell generally, uh, but uh, he's coping with the situation, and I think this kind of judgment will actually even make uh, his condition even worse. Uh, as it was a 79 year old man going for 80 to be abused like this by a justice system is just not fair. All right, Tumzone Lemani, spokesperson for the Jacob Gedleisegi Zuma Foundation. Thank you so much for making time.